we are going to go in and set up a liquidity pool from the very beginning. I had a pool previously on Uniswap. It went out of range given the price move today. I think ETH's up like 5%, 6%. So my pool is no longer generating fees. What do you do when that happens? You remove your liquidity, you rebalance your position, and you create a new pool. Unbelievable. It is. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do that with the Tasty Crypto browser extension. Tasty Crypto is available for Chrome and on mobile, iOS and Android, both. I've got the iOS app. Okay. Check it all the time. Beautiful design, it's, I would say. And it's get the best thing about it, Ryan, it's getting better all the time. It is. We've uh, we've been working on this for a while now. We've got a lot more that's coming soon, but we're excited about where it is. I think finally today, given our last update, which was a week, two weeks ago, we have a lot of the pieces in place for our phase one, for version one. So this is version one, a lot more coming soon, but you can see that you can download this for Chrome or any Chromium browser as a browser extension. We've got it right here in the corner. Um, Sorry, let me find the mouse. There we go. And this is what it looks like. So we've got it installed. It's loading up here. We're going to create a liquidity pool. So we're going to create the liquidity pool, Frank, on Uniswap. I don't know. I keep losing my mouse. I'm going to jump over to Uniswap here. And the first thing that we need to do is we actually have to launch the application. Okay. So we're on the Uniswap protocol website. You can learn more about the protocol. You can get some analytics here. But what you really want to do is launch the app. Well, hold on one second. Are, do we have? Do the guys out there have this up on the network? It's a good question. Right now, because I'm not seeing it on my monitor. I just want to make sure we've got so much great stuff planned here. I'm super excited to, to take a look at launching this liquidity pool. But we're going to need the people at home to see it as well. I've got the monitor up and I just, perfect, perfect. We're going to get up there in a second. Let's yeah. talk about price action then really quickly, Frank. Awesome. Yeah, because I, I just wanted to stop you right there because you're going to launch into what's going to be honestly life changing for me. It'll be like the first time I, I learned you could sell options okay. is setting up this liquidity pool. Um, the price action has been insane. Uh, another, I, I feel like there's been a, a trend recently. You and I jump on on Mondays, obviously. Yes. And we've seen a lot of strong starts to the week for crypto. And I mean, I, I of course, Ryan, you and I have been friends for a long time. And, and so I'm sure you would uh, guess about me that I don't necessarily think there's a trend to like, oh, it's the weekend. And so you should buy crypto into the weekend because it always goes up over the weekend. Obviously, everything is relatively random, especially a market that doesn't close ever. Um, in theory, is really you know random all the time. Um, but but what are you seeing from your side of things that's you know more in the weeds of the crypto universe that warrants some of these you know Sunday Monday huge price action events because we've gotten a few of them over the course of the last couple months. Yeah, you know it's tough to pick. Uh, one specific kind of catalyst or culprit yeah. here, though I would argue you're probably seeing a little bit of a short squeeze. Okay. Um, and the reason why I say that is I'm just looking at, I know we don't have it up on the screen, but on my screens here, I'm looking at the data dashboard from the block. I think it's a great place to go to, to kind of get just, again, an aggregation of everything from what's happening in futures markets to on-chain metrics to some data around stable coins. Uh, those are some of the categories that they have up there. But what I'm seeing here, Frank, is really open interest and volume in the futures markets. And this, to some extent, I do believe is, is related to what we've seen now that the ETFs exist. But you have uh, open interest and in, in trading volumes that are really near all-time highs. Okay. So I think some of that you know, short position that's been built up, maybe you're seeing a little bit of a squeeze. You are seeing some reports of liquidations on the short side. So these are data points that you can actually um, you can find and you can point to to try to get an understanding of what's going on. But yeah, I think you have a lot more participation. Um, start of the week, you know, you, you have more traders coming back. You know, there's definitely more liquidity, more volume activity mm -hmm. um, during the weekdays correlated with, you know, traditional markets uh, compared to the weekend, even though this does trade over the weekend. So I think it's a little bit of that. Um, that said, it's a big move. It feels good when you're, you're long here, for example. 
but I don't think it's really out of the ordinary, to be honest with you. Gotcha. Um, a 5 6% move on a daily basis in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, in other tokens. Um, Solana, for example, is up almost 9% kind of par for the course. Yeah, I, and it's it's funny because you wouldn't even say necessarily like, oh, this is the pent up price action from over the weekend because most of the price action happened during the US session. I mean, I'm sure you watched it, I watched it. We were going into the, um, the US session this morning and Bitcoin and ETH and most crypto across the board was up a couple percentage points. And then it kind of, uh, it, it gave back a little bit on the open, and then it really took off for for the rest of the day. I think you're right. It, it has just become normal in both directions. Um, these five to ten percent uh, moves, but yeah, it's just interesting. I, I couldn't help but notice a few of them happening on these uh, Mondays. And with that, I, we've got the the Uniswap platform up it appears and beautiful i think you're ready to run yeah let's jump back into that and then we'll come back to the markets here at the end because i want to get your thoughts on a couple moves in traditional assets as well sure but let's take a look at the uniswap protocol as i mentioned you've got to open up the app first you go to the website so if i just pop back over here this is what it looks like and i um i guess i also realized that didn't show the tasty crypto app before so as i mentioned we're going to use the browser extension here today okay. You can download the browser extension in the Chrome Web Store. Here's what it looks like. It's called Tasty Crypto, obviously. And then when I click on this, you'll see that it's going to pop up. So I have it installed in the browser. Okay. I have imported an existing wallet, and we're going to use this wallet here to create that liquidity pool. So let's close that and jump back over to the Uniswap application. This is the trading interface. This is where you can swap tokens. So when you connect your wallet, it'll recognize what's in your wallet or what's mm -hmm. associated with that wallet address. You want to swap from ETH to USDC or to one of the other tokens that um, we've talked about. You can do that right here. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to connect your wallet. So in order to do that, you want to click on connect in the upper right corner. You have a couple options that are pre-populated here. We use Wallet Connect in the Tasty Crypto wallet. So if you click on Wallet Connect, it's gonna give you a QR code. If you have the mobile app, you can scan the QR code with your app and then automatically establish the connection. I'm gonna copy the link here and then in the Tasty Crypto application, let me just enter a password and log back in. But in here, I'm going to connect using Wallet Connect by clicking on a little button in the upper right corner. So you can see this link. This is gonna to connect to the DAP which is a decentralized application. And so if I just paste what we copied from Uniswap, it'll connect directly to Uniswap. And now my wallet is connected to Uniswap. You can see that it's changed up there in the upper right corner, no longer says connect. Now we're, um, what's the saying? Cooking with gas, is that it? Bang, I'm so excited about this. I mean, that that was, I mean, obviously really easy. So you have to do a couple of things. Couple you have, steps, to, you have yeah. to get the Tasty Crypto app, open an account one way or another. Um, and yeah, you have to either use the mobile app or use the web browser, or use both as looks like the easiest process. But now we're here and yeah, the, the swap functionality, uh, I don't wanna spend any time on it because it's essentially, you're, you're buying a market, you're converting in the same, when you buy Euro versus USD in the Forex market, it's kind of similar to this where you're like technically converting your, you know, USD to Euro, you're buying Euro. Yes, um, but selling this is the, dollars this, and buying Euro. The same That's thing nice. is the swap functionality, right? Where it's like, I've got 10 grand of USD and I can swap that for USDC. I could swap 10 grand of USDC for ETH if I'm buying ETH. It's just buying or selling a market. Yes, this is all on chain. Now, this is not connected to a bank account or okay. anything like that. It's only connected to the wallet. So I'd have to go to a centralized exchange. Gotcha. If I wanted to then move this, let's say I sell it for dollars on the exchange, I want to move those dollars to my bank account. I'd need a centralized exchange and that on off ramp functionality to do that. But this is going to allow me to trade directly on chain for anything that exists on chain. So as I mentioned, you can see the balance of ETH here. If I wanted to select a different token that I held in the wallet, I could do that. And then I can sell this, in that sense, into USDC. It's easy to think about it that way when you price it in dollars. I can also swap it into any other token. So to your point about currency trading, 
you can think of it a lot more like that, where if I want to sell my ETH and just quickly get into something else, maybe I want the Aave governance token, I can set that up and make the trade. So this is the front end and this is the trading component that's powered by the liquidity pool we're going to set up, right? Where does the liquidity come from? Well, it comes from liquidity providers. I'll show you how to be a liquidity provider on Uniswap right now. It, it, this is, yeah, so cool because the a market like this is invented however many years ago, Ryan, and you, you would technically have to find um, some other person to take the other side of your trade. You know, Bitcoin is starting to run up and for you to buy Bitcoin, someone has to sell it to you, right? But this functionality has been created here, allowing retail individuals to provide liquidity in this market moving in either direction. And, and it, it adds in the same way that a lot of people have learned, oh, I can buy stocks. Oh, I can you know, trade one stock long against one stock short. Oh, great. Oh, I can add this other dimension which is options on top of that stock. This is uh, exactly that, going from swapping, buying or selling the market to providing liquidity. I I'm super excited to set this up. Yeah, and I'd even take it one step further, Frank, and look at this as almost a liquidity mechanism for almost anything. Okay. Granted, it has to be tokenized, but this is a platform or a mechanism for creating liquidity because you can, in theory, swap any token as long as there's liquidity for it. Mm. And so if we take this a step further and we think about what could happen in the future, maybe equities are represented in tokenized form, mm. uh, maybe other assets, uh, coupons, whatever it might be that you wanna trade or you wanna exchange for another token on the blockchain, this facilitates that process as long as there are individuals, institutions, it doesn't really matter, as long as there are liquidity providers mm -hmm. on the other side of that. You have to have a liquid market, but this technology facilitates it. So, you know, it's not a stretch to say that if all equities, all assets were represented in tokenized form, then you would no longer really need a lot of the intermediaries that exist today, right? Um, not saying that they wouldn't be around in some form, sure. but the way that this is done today would look a bit different in that world. Yeah, tr truly leveling. It's one of those events similar to you know Robin Hood and Tasty Trade in these places, taking commissions down to zero, leveling the playing field so that anybody can take part in stock trading and everything. This is almost another step in that direction of like, now anyone can take part in liquidity providing. Yeah, in market making, really. Yeah. You know, it's very, very early. But I think you can see some of the signs. And I was talking to TP about this uh, before the show. To me, it's kind of like you went from open outcry in the pits mm -hmm. to trading on a screen to electronic trading, the rise of retail brokerages, um, you know, your E-trades, your Tasty Trades of the world when that first popped up or go back um, you know, to TP and, and Tom and Scott's days of Think or Swim. Mm -hmm. Right, you know that's an evolution from the open outcry. This, to me, is the evolution from where we are here today. Not happening overnight, but the technology exists in this nascent form that it's. I think it's certainly possible. It's a non-zero probability. I mean, the Uniswap's generated uh, over two billion dollars in revenue uh, since really? inception. You know, m much more than that. So it's not a stretch. Um, this is real, as I like to say. Well, but let's as, set up a pool. Yeah, as we set it up, what is the incentive to, okay, I understand why I'd want to buy or sell Bitcoin or ETH. What, why would I want to set up one of these pools? And I guess that could kind of launch us into setting them up. What is the incentive behind uh, setting up a liquidity pool for me? Aside from it's a historic event, a, a retail individual can enter into these market making functionalities that you couldn't in the past, but, but why would I want to set one of these up? As a liquidity provider, the fees that are charged by the protocol um, and that those that are trading are paying, they don't go straight to a company or to the protocol, directly to Uniswap. They go to the liquidity providers. Mm. So the answer is to make money, gotcha. um, to generate yield, right? That yield might be in the form of other tokens but maybe you want those other tokens and that's the reason why you're providing liquidity for that underlying pair. But the reason you would do this is because of the commercial element to it, um, you know, generating revenue. Again, those fees go to the liquidity providers. So gotcha. that's what I'm interested in. Very cool. All right, Frank, let's set up the pool. So step one in setting up a pool is you click on pool 
at the top. Easy. Very straightforward. We don't have any existing positions. If I show my closed positions and then scroll all the way down here to, you can see I've been doing this for a while, um, all the way down to my most recent pool, uh, this is what I was talking about. So my range was right around 3,000 to the downside and I'm out 3,500 to the upside here. You can see the price is above that. It was well above this earlier. So my pool here, if this was the one that I still had up and running, is out of range. That means it's not generating any fees. I'm not providing liquidity um, for trading around the current price. So I need to rebalance. I need to create a new pool, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I have removed the liquidity prior to this. We'll hide our closed positions. Here's how you set up a new pool. And you guessed it, click on new position. So when I do that, it's gonna give me the ability to select the pair of tokens that I wanna to provide liquidity for. In the same way that I need a pair to swap, I've got ETH, I wanna swap into USDC. Well, what kind of liquidity pool do you wanna set up? In this case, we're gonna stick with the tried and true ETH USDC. So I'm gonna click on USDC. That is my pair. Let me just pull up my notes because I picked out earlier exactly the amount that I wanna put in here because I was telling you that um, when I do this, the fees that I generate, I tend to just keep them in my wallet. You can put them back into your pool, you can compound this. I'm bullish on ETH. Uh, I think it could get to much higher prices as we've discussed. So the fees that I generate in Ethereum and in USDC, I like to keep those in the wallet and then put the same consistent, for the most part, I mean the prices of, of the cryptocurrencies of, ETH, of Ethereum can change, but I like to put around the same size pool position on each gotcha. time. So let me just pull this up. So I've got my numbers. Yeah, and it, it's similar to, I mean, if you've got a dividend paying stock and you have that dividend just going into the stock, of course there's the risk of like, you can't just be like, oh, I, I'm playing with house money because the, the stock that you're getting paid, whatever the dividend yield is, could go to zero. Yes. And sa same in this case. But yeah, to your point, it's like, okay, I, 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 I own the ETH. That's why I'm here. Uh, and, and now I'm trying to make money off of the ETH and so I'm going to keep kind of pumping it into that part of my portfolio. Yes, exactly right. So we're going to set up a pool. We've got ETH USDC. We have to select the fee tier. So we have a fee tier of five basis points, 30 basis points, 1%. This is a pair that is not going to be as volatile as two different cryptocurrencies that maybe aren't always positively correlated. Obviously, we have a dollar stable coin as one side of the pair here. So we're really only worried about the price of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, USDC is one. Could it depeg? Maybe, but for the purposes of this show, it's one. So $1 on this side and then the price of Ethereum on the other side, we're gonna use that five basis point fee tier, which you can see the majority, at least 55% of people setting up these pools tend to select that. So the next step, after we've selected our fee tier and the pair that we're going to put on, and again, you could do ETH uh, versus wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. You could do it against any other token, um, two random ass tokens, if mm. you want to, Frank. Mm. Um, but again, we're gonna go with ETH USDC. We now have to select a price range, and you can think about this as just ETH in dollar terms because the dollar is on the other side of our pair. So, what price range do you select? I knew you were gonna ask that question. <laughs> it's, my, it's my top three questions for sure. Here's how I think about it, okay? You can go and you can look at a chart and you can say, this is support, this is resistance, this is the range I think it's gonna trade in over a period of time. You could say, this is where I'd love to own a bunch of ETH or if I come in and I set this pool up and I've got half of it in Ethereum and half of it in USDC, I'm perfectly fine being 100% USDC at a certain level. Mm -hmm. It might be a similar approach that you would take if you're selling a put. I like the stock at the 100 strike. Mm -hmm. It's trading at 125, it gets down to 100, I'll buy 100 shares at 100. Mm -hmm. You know, a similar concept, I sure. suppose. Or you can use a little bit of math. And I know you're a math guy. Heard about it. So. What I'm gonna do for this pool, or at least as a way to think about it, is to jump over to our expected moves. We ran these numbers earlier, and use the vol and a one standard deviation range as a starting point. So we've got ETH at about 3,600, and we've got a weekly expected range 
Given a volatility of about 77%, that's an implied vol on a 30-day basis, that number or that range is about $400. So let's just use that as a way to set this up. Um, you can model different volatilities. You can set up whatever range you want. Maybe just like $100 up, $100 down, and that's where you want to go. You can do that. We will go to, um, what, about 400 or so. So we'll do 3200 on the downside, and we'll do 4000 on the upside. So this is the range in which we're going to provide liquidity. As I move down, I now have to decide how much liquidity do I want to provide in that range. And as I had mentioned earlier, I kind of ran my numbers and just set this up because I like to keep some USDC in here. I like to keep some ETH in here as well because I'm bullish on ETH. I am going to create a pool that has um, about six tenths of an ETH in it, a little bit over that and um, almost $2,500 in terms of USDC. So we have 4,479 in terms of the USDC balance, but we're going to only add 2457 to this. And you can see that it's going to then balance it out. So we're at about 50-50. I'm gonna be adding spot 64 ETH, which is $2,300 and 2457, almost $2,500 gotcha. in USDC. And that is the total size of the pool. So the total size of the pool will be closer to um, almost $5,000 there. And that's really it. Um, from here, I'm gonna click on preview. It's gonna, again, just kind of confirm and send uh, very similar in terms of review before you, you send your order or add liquidity. And then it's gonna populate the Tasty Crypto application. Um, you are going to pay a gas fee. So this is something that I wanna point out. Yep. And please stop me, because I know I'm just running all over the place without giving you time to ask questions. But the gas fee is what you're gonna pay to interact with the network. So here it's estimated about $55. We're gonna click send now, and then this is going to process here and ultimately, well, give me an error. So I have to look at why that, uh, that error popped up there. But um, <clears throat> once you do that, there we go. Okay, so inadvertent error message. You can see in the app, it's, uh, has added my liquidity. Perfect. And so if I go back to the pool, it should appear. And now here's our active wow. pool. So let's take a look at what we have going on before we wrap up the show. So we set it up. We click the button. We got a weird error message for a second, but let's ignore that. We'll fix yeah. why that popped up. But we've now created the pool. And here's what's going on in this pool. We have almost $5,000 that we are, in a sense, risking to provide liquidity. You can see the makeup of the pool. We started at 50-50, it's right around there. So 51% USDC, 49% ETH. What that tells me is that the price of ETH has increased just slightly. So what's happened in the pool, I've sold some of my ETH that I started with and I've gained a little bit more USDC. Price goes down, there's some selling, I'll have more ETH, I'll have less USDC. The unclaimed fees, we're not quite at a penny as of uh, right yet, but it's only been a couple seconds. This will update automatically as awesome. the protocol is utilized for swaps, right? Um, if I go down here, we'll talk about the risks really quickly, then we'll wrap it up. This is the range, 3,200 to about 4,000 on the upside, right mid-range at the moment. Think about this as a strangle. This is your covered call, short or your short call uh, strike here. I would treat it like a covered call in terms of how I think about it. So if the price goes above 4,000, what's happened? Well, I've sold out of all of my ETH. I only have USDC. My pool will reflect that. It'll be 100% USDC. It'll tell me I'm out of range. I will have collected fees. But in order to then get back in range, I either need to wait and the price has to fall or I have to rebalance the pool and set it up. So you have a risk to the upside, opportunity cost. If I set this pool up and ETH goes to five grand, well, I've missed out on the appreciation of that ETH I otherwise would have experienced. But, right? but I'm capped like a short call. The big question for me, especially, but it seems like if you're using USDC based pairs, yes, you, you, my USDC isn't going to be wild. Exactly, volatile. I'm just going to have dollars. I'm sold out of all. And of so, them. if you put, let's say, ten grand, you put five grand. Let's say you put ten grand into this pool. Yes. Five grand on each side here. And the market, yeah, ETH runs up huge. You're still going to essentially have 
that ten grand minus the gas fees plus your your fees that you generated. Yes, you will have made money, but you have this risk called impermanent loss. You you know I think about this almost as an opportunity cost. Yeah. You would have made more money had you not created the pool. Yeah. But as a strategy, maybe you want a little bit of your crypto in a pool to generate some fees. Exactly. You know there might be times when you want to do this. Might be times when you don't want to do it. But that's what the upside risk is. The downside risk is similar to a short put for all the option traders following along. This is no different than if my position went to 100% ETH. If it's under 3,200, my pool goes from 50-50 to 100% ETH, no more USDC. I might be perfectly fine with that. Worst case scenario, ETH goes to zero. I lose everything. It doesn't sound good, but that's no different than I was put the stock at whatever the price is at $100 a share, it goes down to 50, it goes to zero, it goes out of business, I lose everything. Very similar risk. Um, you have currency risk, you have the, you know, the risk of the underlying asset in this case, that's the risk to the downside here. So those are your two big risks um, in terms of you know, the, the market action and the price action. And let's cover the, I, today was great, we set it up. You show me how easy it is for, if I have ETH, or USDC or funds in my Tasty Crypto wallet, I can very easily set one of these up um, using what you've just shown. I think the next piece is let's dive into what we want to happen, yes. what the risks are involved. Is there counterparty risk at Uniswap? Like, like what what are the risks and what do we want to happen from here on out and uh, and watch this thing uh, hopefully make money? Yeah, we'll monitor this. Um, best case scenario over the next week, you know, best case scenario for us mm -hmm. with this specific liquidity pool is when you think about it, we're short vol. So we want a lot of trading activity, but within a defined range. We want the price of ETH to chop between 4,000 and 3,200. Gotcha. We want to generate fees. Now that's not good for us if we're long a bunch of ETH and we want it to go up. Yeah. But for this specific position, how does it ultimately make money over time? The price of ETH chops in that range and you just collect those sweet, sweet fees. This is awesome, dude. I, I seriously am gonna go set one of these up as soon as possible. I think, we'll talk off the show. I think I have enough money to, to set one of these up relatively safely and see. Oh, I know you guys enough money, Frank. <laughs> I'm so excited, man. Thanks for showing me this. Absolutely. That's going to do it for our show. Victor Jones is up next with The Price of Truth. I'll be back on Wednesday with the one and only Mad Mike. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Ryan. I'm Frank. Peace.